Jean Harlow was an actress from Hollywood's golden age who rose to superstardom before her tragic death at age 26. Many consider her the original blonde bombshell, with her life and career oddly mirroring the later Marilyn Monroe's. At the peak of her success, Jean wasn't afraid to use her body to get ahead. Join Facts First as we explore how Jean Harlow used her breasts like men would use a gun. Before Marilyn Monroe made her entrance into Hollywood and became a Golden Age legend, Jean Harlow was the first blonde bombshell. Jean was born March 3, 1911 in Kansas City, Missouri. Her father was a dentist and her mother a failed actress. Though Jean never had aspirations of her own to become a star, she ended up becoming a movie star her mother had always wanted to be later on. At age 16, she married a young man named Chuck McGrew. They married in 1927. Chuck came from a wealthy family and was set to inherit a modest fortune due to the fact that he'd recently been orphaned. Not long after Jean and Chuck got married, Chuck turned 21, which entitled him to the first big chunk of his inheritance. It was enough that it gave him and his new wife the opportunity to move to Beverly Hills and start living the high life. Given the fact that neither needed to work, Jean and Chuck lived a life of leisure. The two were said to have taken up drinking socially and could be found drinking all day and night. They became a hit amongst their neighbors and were always putting on parties and get-togethers with plenty of alcohol and food. At a daytime get-together, Jean befriended a woman named Rosalie Roy. Rosalie was an aspiring actress, and Jean may have related to her because she reminded her of her mother. When evening came around, Rosalie excused herself, saying she had to go to a meeting at 20th Century Fox. Not wanting to let her time with her new friend come to an end, Jean offered to give her a ride. Stardom Came Looking for Jean Harlow Jean Harlow took her new friend to 20th Century Fox and waited by her car when Rosie went into her meeting. As young Jean stood out by her car, she started drawing the attention of some of the men hanging around the lot. These men were understandably attracted to Jean and assumed the young woman was there to try to get an acting gig. Jean played coy, though ended up giving one of them her number. Jean had never thought about becoming an actress previously, but ended up deciding to give it a go. Around the same time she turned 18, she signed a contract with big-name producer Hal Roach. Around this period, Jean started appearing in Laurel and Hardy shorts. When Jean's mother caught wind of the fact that her daughter was starting to make some waves in the industry, she flew to California and decided she would start acting as her daughter's manager. Many think Jean's mother did this to live her dreams of Hollywood stardom vicariously through her daughter. Not long into Jean's career, she expressed a desire to be let out of her contract with Hal Roach. It seems Jean's husband wasn't all that happy about his wife becoming an actress, and Jean wanted to quit her new job to please him. However, Jean's mother ended up encouraging Jean to press ahead with her burgeoning career, which caused the future star's first husband to leave. Their marriage was over by 1929, and Jean seemed poised to become a big star. Jean Harlow used her breasts like a weapon. Charles McGrew leaving hurt Jean Harlow financially, but these dire straits only made the actress more set on becoming a star. In 1929, she appeared alongside sex symbol Clara Bow in the 1929 film The Saturday Night Kid. Clara had been the reigning sex symbol of the 1920s, but the introduction of sound in film was hurting her appeal. Many silent film stars didn't have the voices to carry their careers into the realm of talkies, and Clara Bow was one. Soon after The Saturday Night Kid, Jean Harlow went on to eclipse Clara as the reigning sex symbol in the entertainment industry. She did this because she had a better voice for talkies and because she had a more progressive view towards sexuality. From her earliest days, Jean Harlow wasn't afraid to sleep around and use her body to get ahead. According to legend, Jean always slept in the nude, and she applied ice to her nipples before every film she shot to make them stand out more. According to writer Graham Greene, Jean Harlow used her breasts the same way most men would use a gun, as a weapon. Jean's weapon of choice certainly helped her dominate the entertainment industry, but things would tragically come crashing down for the actress due to her poor health. Before we tell you more about that, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Jean Harlow got her big break in 1930. Soon after Jean's appearance in The Saturday Night Kid, Jean became the reigning sex symbol of the 30s thanks to her appearance in Howard Hughes' Hell's Angels. The movie was a huge success and proved her big break. Overnight, she became a superstar. Jean went on to appear in a number of notable pictures over the next few years. 
In 1931, she appeared alongside James Cagney in The Public Enemy. The next year, she appeared alongside Clark Gable in 1932's Red Dust. Red Dust was the first of a handful of pictures starring Jean and Clark together. Jean Harlow became one of the biggest stars in Hollywood over the course of the 30s, but it all came crashing down for the actress in 1937. That year, she tragically passed away as a result of kidney failure. At her death, she was only 26. Most people blame Jean's hard partying habits for her tragically young death. She was given a gigantic Hollywood funeral. She had become romantically involved with actor William Powell before her death, and many predicted the two would get married. Her final film was 1937's Saratoga. It was the most successful film of the year, and it was Jean's sixth film starring alongside Clark Gable. Clark has recalled how Jean's health was deteriorating significantly over the course of filming. There were points where she became bedridden, and Clark has recalled kissing the actress around the time felt like kissing a rotting corpse. Apparently, Jean's worsening kidney failure led to her breath smelling like urine. The studio tried to change Jean's image. Over the course of Jean's career, she caught some flack from censors as a result of her upfront sexuality. An organization called the Catholic Legion of Decency was founded in the early 30s, and they found Jean's general screen presence to be so alarming they threatened to boycott all of her films. At the time, a Catholic boycott of Jean's films would have been a pretty big deal. Because of this, the studio went about trying to turn around Jean's image in the years before her death. She had come onto the scene as a stunning blonde bombshell who wasn't afraid to use her sexuality to get ahead, whether on the screen or in the bedroom. By the time of her death, the studio had done its best to make Jean Harlow appear to be a respectable woman. A big turning point in Jean's career was 1934's The Girl from Missouri. The film was initially called 100% Pure. Once censors balked at this title, it was changed to Never Been Kissed. Finally, producers settled on The Girl from Missouri. The script was drastically written over the course of its troubled production. Initially, Jean's character was much more sexually promiscuous. While the studio was successful at making Jean appear more innocent to the audience, the actress was only becoming increasingly debaucherous behind closed doors. Although Jean was only alive for 26 years, she was married three times. Besides Charles McGrew, she was married to filmmakers Paul Byrne and Harold Rawson. Both of these marriages were incredibly short, and Jean would likely have married William Powell if she hadn't tragically passed away. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite memory of Jean Harlow? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content. By the way, if you haven't joined Facts First as a member yet, be sure to look below this video and click the join button. By becoming a paid member of Facts First, you'll get access to exclusive video content that you won't find anywhere else. This includes some of our more mature content that isn't suitable for public audiences, which includes topics like Hollywood actresses who posed for Playboy and some of the steamiest moments in movie history. Plus, you can enjoy these videos completely ad-free. Our biggest fans will notice they also get badges next to their name when they leave comments on our videos. We pay special attention to comments from our members and so do other viewers. So, if you want exclusive content from Faxverse or inside access to discussions with other community members, click the Join button to get started for just $4.99. There are hours of members-only videos waiting for you, with new videos added every month. And we're actively working on bringing even more features to help fans like you connect with other members and get more of your favorite content. Just click Join, and we'll see you inside the Membership tab.